Hi guys, Dr. McJunkin. Welcome to lesson eight, Friday, the last day of AP Calculus. How sad. So we're going to be reviewing our last uh, thing here, differential equations, separable differential equations. We'll have some AP practice problems uh, on this. And then you have your test next Tuesday at noon. It's next Tuesday at noon. So last thing we'll do before the AP test. Okay, here we go. Lesson eight, differential equations. So the thing that we can solve here are separable differential equations, specific kinds of differential equations, or we can put the variables on opposite sides of an equation. So a separable differential equation is just an equation that has a derivative in it. So it's an equation, has an equal sign. One of those things is usually a dy dx or a second derivative, but we haven't really gotten to those. And you won't until calc two or three. So here we've got a, an equation here, dy dx equals 2yx plus yx squared. It's a differential equation because it's got an equal sign and it's got a derivative. Fantastic. We're going to do two things. We're going to try and find the general solution. That means involving the plus c and the particular solution once we know about a initial condition or just some kind of value that we know. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and start by rewriting the problem. dy dx equals, okay, I've got the right-hand side of my equation, and I want to try and separate the y's and the x's. I see that there are y's in both of these terms, so I'm going to factor that out. So I'm going to put a y out front, and then what happens if I factor out that y from the first term? Well, I get 2x. And what happens if I factor out y from the second term? Well, I get x squared. OK, so now I've got y times 2x plus x squared. And now I can divide the y over and multiply the dx over. So how that ch uh, changes then is dy divided by y, move the y to the other side, equals the 2x plus x squared and the dx moves to the other side. So again, I divided both sides by y, and I multiplied both sides by dx to move it over. Cool. Then once I separate, I can integrate both sides. So the integral of 1 over y, got to remind ourselves, is the natural log, the absolute value of y. And then I want to integrate this right-hand side, too. Well, that's x squared plus x cubed over 3 plus c. I only need 1 plus c, and I always put it on the x side. OK. Now I want to solve for y. So what I have to do is exponentiate both sides to get this absolute value of y outside of the natural log. So I can cancel that out, and I get absolute value of y equals e raised to all this power, x squared plus x cubed over 3 plus c. An exponential will never be negative, so I don't really need the absolute value signs anymore. So e raised to any power is always going to be positive. And the last thing that I do to find the general solution is this plus c here can always be moved out front of an exponential. So my solution generally will be c e to the x squared plus x cubed over 3. And all of that is in the exponent of e. All those x's are inside the exponent of e. So this is my general solution for any value c. General solution. For my particular solution, I have to use the fact that my value when I plug in 0 should give me 4. So using the value of y of 0 equals 4, I'm going to say, well, when I plug in x equals 0, my y value has to be 4. So I'm going to replace my y with 4 and my x values with 0. So 0 squared plus 0 cubed over 3. OK, well, 0 squared plus 0 cubed over 3 is 0. So all of this is 0 here. And then e to the 0 is just 1. So I get 4 equals c times 1, or c equals 4. So my particular solution is y equals 4 e to the x squared plus x cubed over 3. And this is going to be my particular solution.
This is my particular solution. Cool. Uh, when we did um, differential equations, we also talked about slope fields and how to draw slope fields based off of differential equations. So let's look at that really quickly too. So I have a differential equation that dy dx equals one plus y over x, where x is not equal to zero, because that would make my slopes undefined. On the axes provided, I want to sketch a slope field for this equation at the eight points indicated. So they've given me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They've already taken away x equals zero because they know that there's going to be no slope there. So a slope field, again, remind yourself, is just a graph of all the slopes at each individual point. So I want to find the slope at these eight different points and then just do a little sketch of what that slope would be, a little tick mark. Remember, the slope is just what dy dx is. The slope is just the derivative. So I just need to plug in the values into this dy dx. So I want to look at the different points I have. And I want to look at what is the slope or what is dy dx, same thing, at that point. The first thing I look at is can, are there any slopes that are zero or undefined? Well, they already told me which ones are undefined. X, x is zero is going to make it undefined. So they've already told me, hey, I'm not going to plot anything there. So that's fine. But where would this be zero? When would my numerator be zero? Y, or one plus y. When is one plus y equal to zero? Well, that means y equals negative 1. So at any point where y equals negative 1, my slope is going to be 0. And there's two points right down here. That's where my slope is 0. Notice I didn't put a tick mark here because that's where x is 0, and there's no slope there. There's no point for me to even put it. That's not one of the eight points they want me to find the slope at. So now I just have six more points to find. One, two, three, like these in a the little triangle here. And one, two, three, these in a little triangle here. So you can go ahead and just plug those values in. I'm going to list all six points. Negative two, zero. Negative one, one. Negative one, zero. One, one. One, zero. And two, zero. So I'm going to plug these values into my slope. So I'm just going to show you like one really quickly, and then we'll put the answers up there pretty fast. So if I want to plug in x equals 2, y equals 0, I would get 1 plus 0 over negative 2, or negative 1 half. If I want to plug in x equals negative 1, y equals 1, I get 1 plus 1 over negative 1, which is going to give me negative 2. And you keep going, you'll get, what's, let's see, negative 1 for that one, 2, 1, and 1 half. And so your slope should look like this. So make this one really slope, uh, really steep at negative two, make this one less steep at negative one, and make this one even less steep at negative one half. Make this one really steep at positive two, less steep at positive one, and even less steep at positive one half. And so we should get a slope field that looks like this. Cool. Let's do an AP problem from start to finish on problems like this. So here's a differential equation, dy dx equals 1 third x times y minus 2 squared. Um, for this first point, a, or this first part, it would be out of two points, and I'll show you why. So they show us a slope field. We don't have to create it. They show us a slope field for the given differential equation. And we want to find the solution, we want to sketch it, that goes through two different points, 0, 2, and 1, 0. And let me go ahead and use different colors here. So we want to just find the solution and sketch it here. And they've actually shown us the points. They've put little dots at those two points. <clears throat> so what we need to do for these is just uh, take the point that we're at and then follow the slope field on either side. So we're just going to follow the slope lines. So the key here is to follow the slope lines when I graph. That will be giving my solution. So I'm going to do this one in green, 0, 2, or teal, whatever this color is. 0, 2 is this point right here. And I want to know, well, what does it look like on either side? Well, on this side, I'm going to follow the slope lines and give me a straight line here. And on this side, I'm going to follow the slope lines and give me a straight line here. So the solution to this one would just be a flat line at y equals 2. 
It's a pretty boring solution, but it is one of the solutions to this equation. That would get you one point by getting that one correct. Now, the more fun one is the one at one zero, which I'll do in pink here. That one's this line here. And now I want to go on either side again and follow the slope lines. Let's do the right-hand side first because it's faster. It's following these, and I get something like this. And then I want to go on this side and follow the slope lines as best as I can as well. So it goes here. Looks like it's like zero on here. And then it curves back up. Around here. So that would that would give me another point for giving them the solution to that uh, uh, going to that point on the slope field. So one for the straight line, one for the fun curvy line. Two points there. Remember that all of your AP questions they may be different this year since they're online, but all the old AP questions were always out of nine. So two points for the first one. And it's a little bit just a small part of that question. For B, I want to say, let y equals f of x be the particular solution to the given differential equation with initial condition f of 1 equals 0. That means when I plug in x equals 1, my y value gives me 0. I want an equation for the line tangent, or tangent line, to the graph of this function at x equals 1, so at the point they gave us. Use your equation to approximate the function at point 7. So there's going to be two points here as well. One for getting us the slope or the tangent line, and one for the approximation. So let's go ahead and find the tangent line. What I need for the tangent line is a slope and a point. They gave me the point, x equals 1, y equals 0, right here. So all I need is the slope, which is the derivative evaluated at x equals 1, y equals 0. Your derivative is just from up here at the top. They gave it to you already. You're going to plug in x equals 1 you're going to plug in y equals 0. So you'll get 1 third times 1 times 0 minus 2 squared. This is 1 third. This is 4. So you should get 4 thirds for your slope. Or your tangent line, y minus 0 equals 4 thirds x minus 1. You get one point for either of these. What they're really looking for here is finding the slope. So if you have the slope there, or if you have this up there, you're going to be good to get the point. I'll just go ahead and box this equation. I like to put the equation, but they'll generally give you the point just for the slope. You need to use the equation to actually approximate, but they don't actually need, usually need to get the slope of the, of the line there. They'll be pretty lenient with you. So if I want to approximate y or f of 0.7, you just need to plug this into your uh, tangent line approximation, which is right here. So the y minus 0 doesn't really matter. So if I want to plug in 0.7, I get 4 thirds 0.7 minus 1. And if I want to do it without a calculator, 0.7 minus 1 is negative 0.3, which is negative 3 tenths. Oh my gosh, the threes cancel. And I get negative 4 tenths as my answer. Or you could put it as negative 0.4. But that gets you a second point. Again, this one only out of two points. We're still missing five points. That is the last part of the question. The last part of solving the differential equation is where you get the majority of your points. OK, so part C, where five big points come from. Uh, your quiz for today will be a question like this, where it's out of nine points. And it's going to be graded just like an AP free response question. So five points will come from this solution uh, part of the problem. So big points here. This is where you want to focus if you see this. Big points. I actually want to find the particular solution. So I need to write down my differential equation. This is just copying from the original equation. dy dx equals 1 third x times y minus 2 squared. First point comes from separating. So I want to put the y minus 2 squared on the bottom over here. I'm going to divide by it. And I'm going to multiply the dx to the other side. One point from the separation of variables. OK, now I have to integrate. This is a pretty tricky integration here. The right-hand side will be easy. 
the left hand side needs a u substitution because i don't know how to do one over something squared if it's not x squared that can turn to x to the minus two so i need to actually use substitution here and say u equals y minus two and du equals dy so what that becomes is then du over u squared and that's what i want to integrate one third x dx integration here now because i don't have y minus two squared i have just u squared that's easy to integrate that's u to the negative one over negative one and i'm going to integrate the right hand side here as well to get one third times x squared over two plus c i get one point for the antiderivative and i get one point just for having that plus c that's great so one point for the antiderivative one point because i included the plus c um sorry i should actually go ahead and put the the u back in that should be y minus two to the negative one over negative one equals one third x squared over two plus c so i want to make sure that i multiply or i change this back into y okay now we need to actually try and solve for y and solve for c those are our last two points is isolating the y isolating the c I'm going to multiply by negative one on both sides just to get that out of there. And I'm going to turn this back into one over y minus two. Uh, that's going to give me a negative one six x squared plus c. The c can be any value, so I'm okay with just keeping it positive. If it turns out to be negative at the end, it turns out to be negative. The one six came from these being multiplied, and the negative one comes out from here. To solve for y, to get this y minus 2 out of my denominator, I flip both sides. So if I flip 1 over y minus 2 to y minus 2, I flip this as well and get 1 over negative 1, 6x squared plus c. And I want to add the 2. OK, so I get one point for isolating y. I need y equals. My last point is using my initial condition to solve for c. So let's go on this side here. Let's not fully get rid of it. My initial condition was f of 1 equals 0. So when I plug in x equals 1, my y value should be 0. So when I replace this y with 0, that's equal to 1 over negative 1, 6, 1 squared plus c, plus 2. I'm going to subtract the 2 over. Negative 2 equals 1 over negative 1, 6x squared plus c. I'm going to do the same trick I did before, uh, flipping both sides. So if I want to get this c stuff out of the denominator, I'm going to flip both sides. Negative 1 half equals negative 1, 6. Oh, why did I flip this back to a x? That should be a 1. But 1 squared is just 1, so I'm just going to get rid of it right now. Sorry, I forgot about that, guys. 1, 6, or negative 1, 6 plus c. If I put the 1, 6 onto the other side, my c value, I'm going to do something off here. Ah, wrong on my answer key. Let's go ahead and put this back in here then. So I want to do negative one half uh, plus one six. So I should get negative one third as my C value here. Let's go ahead and make sure I did that correctly because it's off from my notes. Ah, I just did that wrong enough. That's fine. Cool. So then my solution then is y equals 1 over negative 1 6 x squared minus 1 third plus 2 is my final answer here. Okay, cool. So I know that was a lot. Yes, AP problems are crazy. So go ahead and if you need to pause the video 
rewatch, et cetera. Um, let me know if you've got any questions from 9.30 to 11.30 today or uh, from 2.45 to 3.45, I'll be online for office hours. Um, I'll make it probably an extra video just to kind of pump us up before the AP exam, make sure that you got this. Um, and yeah, I don't know, there's lots of stuff going on, but we're gonna do it. We've got AP, uh, we've got this AP calc exam down. And then once we're done with that on Tuesday, there'll be no more calculus to do. If you do want to know what the rest of calculus looks like, let me know. I can probably get you, I can um, direct you to some Khan Academy videos of what the last unit would have looked like if the year hadn't ended early. Um, but otherwise, I will see you some other time. Graduation probably. Hey, great, fantastic. Have a good weekend, guys. I'm going to stop rambling. <laughs> Bye.